Good afternoon. So the aim of this video is to best understand um, the features or landscapes that are formed in the upper course. So the upper course is a kind of top third part of the river where it's steep, it's shallow, um, and we find a kind of uh, a low discharge. Um, for the purpose of this lesson, if you split your page in two um, horizontally rather than vertically, and um, there's kind of two sets of landscapes we're going to best understand today. We're going to try to think about um, V shaped valleys and interlocking spurs that form within them, and then uh, afterwards we'll have a look at waterfalls and gorges and the kind of connections between those landscapes. Um, as you watch this video, feel free to pause and um, make any little notes, but essentially, we're looking to kind of get the best understanding we can of how these two landscapes are created. So, um, first thing we're going to think about is V-shaped valleys. We can see a drone shot of the uh, of a place called um, Cross Fell, which is near the source of the River Tees, uh, which eventually flows out towards Middlesbrough in the north of the UK. Um, and here we can see kind of snaking through the landscape. Um, this v-shaped valley so here the valley is very steep and it's also very narrow with a very small river um, flowing at the bottom the river tees here this landscape would have been one flat field but or plain but this river has cut this kind of narrow deep incision um, known as a v-shaped valley into the landscape so um this is a little recap, really, but we, you know, we thought about from the Bradshaw model in the upper course, and as a river stuck nearest to the source, we have these really steep, uh, narrow valleys, which is our kind of um, the beginning of our V-shaped valley, where the discharge is low, but the, the altitude is high, and the altitude is quite important because that provides the gravitational potential energy, which makes that. Uh, makes for the vertical erosion of that kind of vertical incision into the landscape. Eventually, due to kind of hill slope processes, which we'll go over, that river valley widens as it moves down towards the middle course. Uh, and then once it's in the middle course, you can see the valley is much wider. We've still got these kind of valley valley sides. Um, and this is the point at which uh, horizontal erosion kind of starts to, to take over. Um, widening the valley, mainly due to, to meanders, which we'll cover uh, in Wednesday's lesson. Okay, so here we've got our kind of classic V-shaped valley, um, and what we need to understand for our notes is kind of how this is formed. So our first process is our vertical erosion, which cuts down um, and gives the valley its depth. This is largely due to the gravitational potential energy, which is cutting down or eroding down. The main types of erosion at this stage will be hydraulic action, where the turbulent water is hitting against rocks and hitting against the, uh, the banks and bed of the river. Um, and abrasion particularly, we've got these large angular rocks and, and boulders, that as they do move, they can scrape um, away at the bed of the river and give it its depth. Okay, so that's kind of how our, our valley gets deeper. But the new element of this is kind of a hill slope processes. So all along the side of this valley are actually forces um, that are also helping to shape and widen this valley rather than just having this kind of steep um, vertical walls. Um, and there's two processes kind of working together. First, of all, we've got weathering. Okay, so we've got a kind of combination of physical weathering due to differences in heat. That could be some things like freeze thaw weathering, where uh, where water could be getting into cracks in the rock, freezing and expanding, breaking the rock apart. It could be due to um, kind of chemical weathering, where potentially um, soluble gases such as sulfur dioxide dissolve in the rainwater. This then produces acid rain, um, which can dissolve. Um, and weaken the rock on the sides of the valley, or it could be due to biological weathering. And I think that's probably one of the dominant processes here, where the roots, uh, potentially small animals making burrows, kind of um, grow down into the soil and rock 
and kind of break and weaken that process. So that's our weathering, which is weakening the rock on the sides. Now, once that rock is weakened, um, the second set of hill slope processes uh, known as mass movement can kick in. So this could be, if it's, if it's a kind of really steep, hard rock surface, um, a fast mass movement like a rock fall or a landslide, this is where the rock has been kind of compromised and weakened to such an extent that it collapses and we get a, a land, landslide um, or a rock fall. And I so say this can create scree slopes, which is kind of where we have loose rocks that are uh, scattered on the sides of the valley. In this landscape, it's not bare rock. So here we've got a different hill slope process of mass movement occurring and um, most likely either slumping or soil creep. Now these are both much slower processes of mass movement, too slow to really observe um, if, in, in kind of in process, but um, we can kind of see some of the telltale signs of them when we look at these landscapes. Essentially what's happening is the gravity is causing the soil and the rock to slowly slip down towards the valley sides. Now, uh, the softer the rock, the fast and um, soil, the, the faster this can happen. The steeper the slope, the faster this can happen. But also, the rain is, is a really important factor. What can happen when we've got heavy rain is the the sides of the valley um, can become and the soil can become saturated, making it much heavier. Uh, but also, um, providing a lubricant for the particles within the soil um, and the cl or the clasts, as they're sometimes known, to slip down into the valley. And then finally, what will happen is the river will carry away, especially if it's during times of high discharge, maybe after a storm, any of that sediment that's been that's fallen into the river channel and carry it down into the middle and lower course, leaving it kind of clear and over time widening our V-shaped valley. Um, now, here's another example of a V-shaped valley and we can sort of see where we might have some kind of soil creep where it's been some slips and some slides down into the river. But we'll also see the river here is not in a running straight. It's got this, these bends. Okay. Um, now, these bends are, due to, are known as interlocking spurs within the river. Uh, and it's not at this stage due to meandering, which we'll come on to later. It's due to the river having low energy. So it's got a low discharge, therefore low energy. So when it comes across areas of rock that are harder to erode, so we can see here, there's a kind of a band of harder rock. We can see the kind of visible outcrops of kind of bare rock here. And um, the, the water, rather than eroding through it, has to flow around it. So what these interlocking spurs are is kind of bands or ridges of harder rock, which, which the river flows around to give it this winding um, channel. Okay, so that's that's it for V-shaped valleys and interlocking spurs. The second uh, set of landscapes we're gonna be having a look at is um, waterfalls and gorges. Now this is high force, also on the River Tees. So at this point we traveled maybe 10 or 20 miles further along that river. This is the same river, although it's uh, probably after pretty heavy rainfall to create this really turbulent um, flow here. Now, the most important attribute of waterfalls is we have two different rock types. So here we can see, if we look carefully, this darker band of rock and then this um, lighter band of rock. And in this case, the lighter rock is the harder or more resistant rock and the softer rock beneath it is less resistant. And that's really, really important. So do remember those two, the key element for waterfalls is two different rock types, a harder rock on top and a softer rock beneath it. Now, if we switch to a diagram, we can sort of see what happens. So as the river is flowing over these, over the different bedrock and the, the river bed changes from hard to soft rock, the softer rock is eroded faster and this creates a step in the river channel um, and over time this step will deepen as the softer rock continues to erode faster and faster and um, in addition it actually um, 
creates its, it, a faster rate of erosion itself as, as the water falls over the edge of this waterfall, uh, it increases the rate of hydraulic action and increases the, the power the river has when it hits against the, the bottom of the bed uh, on this softer rock. Now, what we have here in a third diagram is the softer rock starting to undercut the harder rock. We've got the creating of a plunge pool here at the bottom, which is this deeper area carved out by the hydraulic action of the water falling. And some of that water is falling back uh, and it's cutting or undercutting this harder rock to create a cave behind the waterfall. Okay, now that cave will grow, that plunge pool will deepen over time and that will actually um, compromise the stability uh, of the harder rock. And eventually this, this band of this kind of edge of harder rock on the riverbed is gonna collapse into the water, into the plunge pool. This is gonna do two things. One, it's gonna provide um, hard sediment that is gonna be um, kind of swill around and, and break apart and, and continue this process of erosion at the bottom of the plunge pool and um, through abrasion. And two, it's gonna cause the waterfall to retreat backwards. And it's this retreating waterfall that creates our plunge pools. And here we can see another diagram of that. So we've got our two different rock types, harder rock on top, softer rock on the bottom. The softer rock erodes faster. This creates an overhang. The overhang collapses into the plunge pool and the edge of the waterfall retreats back up the channel. And um, over time, and eventually this will create what's known as a gorge. Now a gorge is a very, very narrow and steep valley. And it's created uh, in a space where the waterfall has retreated backwards, okay? Um, and that's the key processes for creating a waterfall and a gorge.